I've been lucky to experience the MetaQuest 3 early and let me tell you, there is a lot to unpack. So today I'll give you my first impressions of the good, the bad, the specs and everything in between. Meta recently invited me to London to try out the third generation consumer headset. And while they covered the trip, they didn't pay for this video nor did they obligate me to create one. Now I found aspects that I absolutely loved but also disappointments. First, the Quest 3 is claimed as the thinnest yet most powerful standalone headset to date. And here's a twist. Pre-orders start now and it's available to buy on October 10th, breaking away from Meta's usual longer launch schedule. And this is awesome, you get Ascars Red 2 included, which will be available on December 15th. As for the price, you're looking at 500 US dollars for the 128 gig model, and for those craving more space, there's a 512 gig version that comes in at 650 dollars. At the event, I found that the Quest 3 changes the whole approach Meta is taking, which is going to affect the VR industry big time, I'll explain later. Let's talk about the looks first. It isn't hard to notice that the Quest 3 design has undergone another transformation. But this time around, I like the changes. The front is remarkably thinner, boasting a 40% slimmer optic profile than its predecessor, the Quest 2. As you can see, most of the size is made up of the face foam only. Peel that away and I was left marveling at the compactness of the tag contained within. It's pretty insane how small it is. Now at the bottom, there are volume controls and wait for it, an IPD slider. Finally, Meta delivered a slider again that lets us adjust the lens distance to match your eyes for an optimal VR view. It has a range between 58 and 71 millimeters. On the sides, there's the power key. Notably, the charging port has transitioned to the strap. The audio jack made a similar move to the strap on the opposite side. Now there are cameras and sensors on the front and sides for tracking your movements with inside-out tracking. Some of these sensors are new, like the dual 4 megapixel RGB color cameras and a depth sensor. These enhancements promise a more true-to-life representation of your surroundings with 10 times more pixels in pass-through compared to Quest 2. This represents a significant leap forward in this tech. But hold on, I'll dive deeper into the mixed reality experience in a bit. Here's my first disappointment, I have five more. The iconic Oculus logo is replaced by the Meta logo. I get it, branding evolves, but it's a nostalgic touch that I'll miss. The included soft head strap also has a new design, featuring a split at its tail end. This is thoughtful as it caters to diverse hairstyles. For those with longer hair, like myself, you can easily tie it up in a knot and tuck it in between. Not only does this ensure comfort, but it might also help balance the headset's weight, making it more stable on your head. While I didn't have a precise skill with me, I did bring my Quest 2 to gauge any perceivable weight difference. Interestingly, the Quest 3 does not feel much lighter. The front remains quite heavy, however, its slimmer design seems to distribute the weight more comfortably on the head. While I need more time to draw definitive conclusions, a 45 minute test with the Elite strap felt consistently comfortable. Do note we didn't get to try it with the new soft strap yet, but comfort seems to be a notable improvement. Comfort is so subjective though, so I anticipate that some of you might want to experience with different straps for the Quest 3. To cater to this, additional accessories like the Elite strap and its battery equipped counterpart will be available. But disappointment number 2, sadly the Quest 2 straps won't be compatible due to the redesign. I can imagine that this is frustrating for those of us who've invested so much money in multiple accessories for the previous model. But like with the Quest 2, there will be other accessories available like a charging dock and active straps tailored for the Touch Plus controllers. But here's something I like. You can now add more personality to your headsets with these customizable facial interfaces and head straps. As of now, you have a choice between this vibrant orange and an ocean blue. But given the pace of the VR community, I'd bet we'll soon see an array of eclectic colors. Inside the headset, it packs a punch. It's powered by the brand new Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2, which means double the processing power than Quest 2. Plus, it has 8 gigs of RAM and Wi-Fi 6E support. At last, a true chip upgrade. Qualcomm sent me one to uh, showcase isn't it a beauty? Such an upgrade generally translates to faster load times, smoother gameplay, and a potential visual uplift in games as developers tailor their creations to this new hardware. 
Have I noticed a difference out of my initial tests? Well, yes, I tried an upgraded version of Red Matter 2 and the visual uplift was huge compared to Quest 2. The sharpness and the details were insane. I need to do side-by-side -side tests with the Quest Pro later. I'm not allowed to show in-headset recorded gameplay yet, so you have to trust me on this for now. Now onto the third disappointment out of five. I can't help but voice my disappointment at the missing eye and face tracking. Because this isn't just a superficial feature anymore, it deeply enriches social exchanges and refines gameplay as seen on other headsets, so I'm sad. I think it's a missed opportunity. While the missing features sting, the display does offer a silver lining boasting duo LCDs and pancake lenses. The Quest 3 delivers a 4K plus infinite display at 4128 times 2208 pixels in total. But in VR, resolution isn't the only metric. Unlike with TVs or smartphones where resolution is paramount, VR visual clarity is also determined by the pixel density and the lens's optical properties. The Quest 3 has the highest pixel density of any Quest headset at 25 pixels per degree. Pair that with the improved magnification provided by the new pancake optics, and it's evident even from my initial observations that images appear markedly sharper. The sweet spot feels bigger, and I was impressed by the edge-to-edge -edge clarity. The Quest 3's color gamut and contrast ratios are a notch above the Quest 2, presenting richer and more vivid visuals. But I don't think it's better than that of the Quest Pro. That said, 25 PPD is not the highest of any VR headset on the market today, but it's looking pretty great, especially considering the price point, although I do need to spend more time with it. Now, disappointment number four. There's one more left, and this is a big one. The Quest 3 doesn't inherit the Quest Pro's logo dimming deck. This might mean the Pro could have better contrast levels like deeper blacks, but I do need to see it side by side to really know, which I will do later, so if you're interested in this, let me know in the comment below. The refresh rate can now do 90Hz and a smooth 120Hz out of the box. It appears that they've ditched the 72Hz, which makes sense. But disappointment number 5. The field of view feels similar to that of the Quest 2. I know a lot of you, including me, wanted this to be wider, but there's almost no difference. I'll measure this more exactly in my upcoming full review, so make sure to subscribe to not miss anything and joining us beyond reality. There are now buttons inside the headset that you can push so you can move the facial interface up and down to fit your glasses. Time for runtime. Expect a playtime ranging between 2-3 to three hours depending on what you do with it. I speculate that although the battery capacity is higher, it consumes more due to the enhanced spec. Thus, I'm guessing the battery life is roughly equivalent to that of the Quest 2, which isn't extensive. However, many of us tend to use a power bank strap to prolong playtime anyway. Now, one of the biggest changes of the mall is that the Quest 3 now has high fidelity full color mixed reality. In case you don't know what that is, think of it like a mix between VR and AR experiences. With Quest 3 on, you can choose to still see your room through its HD cameras on the front of the headset. Now, digital elements can be seamlessly overlaid on it, making your real surroundings part of a game. This is called mixed reality. I got to test the magic with different MR games, like this MR mode in Stranger Things, and the upgraded cameras and depth sensor are leaps and bounds better than the Quest 2's low quality black and white view. Depth perception looks great so far. I'll compare this more later, but I think it surpasses the Quest Pro. Sure, there are still imperfections like warping on the sides and it's not a 20 20 sharpness, but it's a fast improvement over the Quest 2. And yes, I can finally read text clearly on my phone while in pass through, which is awesome. And I love that in many games the depth sensor is now being used, so you see virtual things interact with your real life walls, windows, or even furniture. I'm genuinely excited about mixed reality because while escaping to virtual worlds is captivating, there's something magical about blending it with the real world, like Pokemon Go did. That's actually a good gateway to Quest 3 software, which operates within the same ecosystem as all other Quest devices. This is a plus as it grants you access to the existing library of over 500 games, and if you come from an older headset, 
Transitioning your profiles and games will be easy. With the new headset, however, you might enjoy added perks, like an improved smart guardian benefiting from the new depth sensor and a new MR home environment with spatial augments, I think that's what it's called. They showed us an example where you see a portal in your space and you can hop into it to launch games and stuff. Meta is also releasing major software updates like access to 2D screens so your Quest 3 can be used as a big TV screen that you can bring anywhere. Xbox Cloud Gaming is finally releasing and there will be 50 new games and apps coming and 50 existing apps will be adding new mixed reality features. For the rest, we'll just have to wait and see what developers do with it. The Quest 3 offers two methods for interaction, the controllers or hand tracking. With hand tracking, you can immerse yourself in the virtual world using only your hands. I didn't get to test this enough, so more about this later, but it does seem improved. The controllers, now named Touch Plus, have received a significant makeover. Although they still rely on batteries, their design has become sleeker, notably with the absence of the tracking rings as seen on earlier Quest controllers. They feel great, much lighter than any of the previous controllers. They also added new buttons that you can press in to pop out the battery cover, which is a much better design than before. While they might resemble the Quest Pro controllers, these aren't self-tracked. Then you might wonder, how do they track? Well, they still use infrared LEDs which, while invisible to our eyes, are detectable by the headset cameras. However, these lights can sometimes be occluded, especially when gripping the controllers. To counter this, Meta is now using LED tracking with continuous hand tracking at the same time. And based on my initial impressions, the tracking feels reliable, but I will put it to more rigorous tests later. Additionally, there's an option to upgrade the fully self-tracked Quest Pro controllers for enhanced tracking on Quest 3 if you want to. Now back to the shift in approach by Meta. It's clear that with Meta Quest 3, Meta isn't aiming just for gaming, but for a comprehensive mixed reality experience. The Meta Connect keynote echoed a clear focus on MR, with new game announcements like many MR modes for existing or new games, like the ones I've shown you in this video. But that's not all. They showed us key use cases beyond gaming, like for fitness, entertainment, social and productivity. This headset isn't just about immersion, I think it's also about integration into your daily life. Here's my read, Meta wants to rival competitors, potentially Apple, but with focus on affordability. So the Quest 3 has its trade-offs, but they're trying to prioritize visuals without breaking the bank. Don't get me wrong, gaming isn't on the back burner, excitement is in the air, with Asgard's Wrath 2 and the anticipated Assassin's Creed Nexus VR that should be awesome on this headset. But what about GTA, I hear you ask? That's still a mystery, but I am on the hunt for answers at MetaConnect. Speaking of which, we are there right now covering the event in person. So subscribe if you like the content and follow us on Instagram as we'll be posting about the event live. We'll also have more time with the Quest 3 there and in the upcoming weeks. So if you have any remaining questions, drop it below in the comments and I'll consider them while we create the next videos. I hope to see you there.